Yippee I, yippee I, yay. So, John, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z. So nice to see you again. Great to see you, pal. Good to see you. Tell us about last night. I went to the uh, celebration of Peter Green that Mick Fleetwood hosted, and I got to just be a fan and jump up and, ch and cheer when Pete Townsend came out and uh, David Gilmore and Steven Tyler and Billy Gibbons. And uh, it was an amazing night of the blues. And so was it a Q&A? Were they playing? Did no, it a, they a performed bit of everything? at the London Palladium. Right. Which I had known that venue because we did it a couple of years back, and so I just sat up in the in like the Queen's box and uh, <laughs> the royal box <laughs> in the royal box and <laughs> and waved and you know just had a glass of wine and watched it. It was awesome. Did you channel your inner Queen? Yes, <laughs> yes, I did the the wave, the, the Queen's wave. So, so what was it like? So, invited audience? How come you were there? Uh, I'd I'd watched Mick on the news talking it up. Right. So you know, I'd just gotten into town and you know, I'm jet lagged and I woke up in the morning and I saw the morning news he was promoting it and I said, Oh my god, I gotta get the tickets. So I just became an Uber fan and went there. So when did you arrive? Night before last. Okay, and how come you're here? You're here to talk about the new single, here to, to record the single with uh, in the presence of Prince Harry on Friday, is that correct? That's correct. I wrote a song for a documentary. Um, it's about veterans with PTSD in America. But on a parallel course, I had sent him a letter back in August with the song and the lyric before it came out in America. And uh, I said it would be a great gift from me to the Invictus Games. And uh, long story short, and who knew what was going to happen with him? He had said yes, and now stuck to it, and so we're doing it. So, so in Rachel's bulletin just before, this is correct, isn't it, Rachel? Uh, one of the headline stories is Prince Harry flies back into Britain yeah. uh, to complete his uh, final uh, few engagements as an official member of the of the royal senior the royal senior royal family. And I think I think your event might be the last thing he's doing. I think it's the first thing he's is doing. Right, he's it's doing? tomorrow. Uh, uh, Friday, 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 Friday. Yes, he's got okay, all stuff his on last all, thing. all month, and that until oh, thirty first of March oh, is it. when they end. Okay, well, whatever. All right. Now, will you be inviting him to to BV or to to? Yeah, he's tap gonna. I have my hand in a tambourine. See what what he's got going. <laughs> you know, I, I've been asking, what do I do? I, how do I address him? And then I realized I'm going to call him the artist formerly known as Prince. Oh, very good. <laughs> very good. I bet you're pleased with that one, aren't you? <laughs> oh, you know me. I'm good for one every two decades, Chris. <laughs> well, it's nice that you, you saved it for us this time around. So so you go to Abbey Road. Uh, you, you get in the, 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 the magic in the walls. It's, yeah. it's in there, isn't it? Have you, have you been before? Have yes, you I have. Before? Tell I me about your experiences have. there before. Well, it's it's the holy ground, you know, and, and knowing Sir Paul, uh, you go and you, you talk to him about being there and then going there last time we were here to play Wembley over the summer I dragged my whole family and we had to do the tourist thing and walk across the of course, of course you did you know, yeah, after you, all these years and you have to feel for the motorists don't you on, oh. on any given day yeah, yeah because yeah. it's just like shall we go down Abbey Road or not oh shall we risk it what did we do this for yeah. right <laughs> yeah somebody was telling me recently I, I think they lived around there they said I don't slow down at that turnabout <laughs> <laughs> you guys are rotten he goes I'm so sick of the tourist can't take it's, so funny uh, because now there, there's all this talk about because because there you have people dominating traffic and there's all this talk now about the fact that somehow 10 20 30 maybe 50 years ago even we slipped into this habit of designing cities for cars and not people yeah which is so stupid <laughs> because each car takes up 25 times the amount of space that a person would and now people can't get in or if they are and they're going to get poisoned it's so, it's so crazy maybe abbey road is the way forward that would make sense for, from a karma point yeah, of view exactly, wouldn't it? exactly okay so um you're in Abbey Road. Um, you're there. You're, you're going to be there on, on Friday. You have so you're going to be playing again. You but you've invited a, a choir of Invictus. Yeah. So what it is is the Invictus uh, Games had a choir. Right. And so my idea and letter to him at the time was, I'd like to give you the single. I would love to give something back to the people of the UK who have given me so much in these last yeah. nearly forty years. But I want them to be the singers. So it's you know it's the we are the world of uh, of for this song. I, I've got twelve veterans. They'll sing the choruses to the existing track, uh, which, you know, I did, and it'll be on the new record. So, uh, and then we'll release it as a single here in time for their games and hopefully raise them some money. And what's interesting about that, well, many things, but particularly uh, just thinking now, is that you are so up for this, you're so ready for this, uh, which is fantastic. And, you, you you know, you are giving of yourself and of your talent and of your time, uh, but nowhere near as much as they've given of their, of which, course. which you're more than aware of. Right. And you're going there and you're going to be so proactive and so positive, but I, al I already know that because you're so excited about it, you'll forget about the fact that you're going to get hit in the face um, like an ex like being hit by an express train by these guys' stories because that's gonna yeah. that will get you on Friday. That's what it's all it? about. Yeah, 
Uh, you know, and I had met with several of the vets in, in America for the documentary that I'd written the song for. And uh, to see what they went through and the sacrifices they made of their bodies and, and their minds and, and recovering from PTSD. And, you know, it's, uh, it's tough because the men and women who are so closely identified with the uniform, when they come home and take it off, we don't recognize them. They don't have their superhero uniform on anymore. Yeah, that's you know? true, isn't it? And so they're adjusting to life in the civilian world and they're still living in those memories. It's uh, not easy. Do you, uh, talking about um, about about uh, about things that are important, Abbey Road itself very important. You know, there, there was talk about it being turned into apartments and flats a few years ago. Can you imagine? Yeah. And it, it was so close to happening. And all I thought, John, was uh, a why, right? Full stop. B, if this if Abbey Road was in America, it'd be gone. It, that it'd be, it'd be over and done and dusted because it doesn't matter anymore, does it? Correct. Unless somebody buys it and ring fences it. And... Correct. You know, some of the great recording studios in New York are now gone. So, uh, you just brought to mind Sony Studios, Hit Factory, Atlantic, all gone. The power station is now owned by a college, and, and you got to be a part of the school uh, when it reopens yeah. in, in order to record there. The power station, that's the place where I used to sweep floors. I mean, a world-famous studio. Uh, gone, all gone. Tell us about that. Tell us about you sweeping floors. Though. Oh, back in 1980. Uh, you know, I was the, the gopher back in a recording studio, but a world famous place where I witnessed, I witnessed a part of the recording of Under Pressure with Freddie and Bowie in the studio. <laughs> I watched it through the window. Uh, that's where Bowie did um, uh, Dangerous Moonlight, right? The, the Nile Rodgers record. I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I'm half awake. But anyhow... Madonna, Chic, Bruce, uh, you, the Stones. That it was a world famous. Just place. tell Gone. us about the moment. So, you, so what were you, What was your job at the time when you were peering through the window? Go and fetch whatever you want. You know, nineteen eighty. It's September nineteen eighty. I get a job there as a gopher, uh, and that's my job. Go for lunch. Go for you know dry cleaning. Clean up after the studio, and and watch and stare through the windows. And, and what, I mean, what a thing to witness. You know, you said you, said you watched part of it. Yeah. Which, which bit did you see? Can you I, remember? I think they were singing, but it was, they were doing vocals in New York. Um, did you talk to the them? Stones, no, 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 I didn't know. You weren't told not to talk to the artists. Really? Or look at them in the eye. Right, <laughs> exactly. No, but you know, I've got incredible memories in my childhood of, of the Stones and Chic and Cher and Bruce and, um, I mean, you name it, the legends came. So, so how did you get from the wrong side of the glass, from your point of view, to the right side of the glass? When, when was the first for, when time When those that little happened? eighth notes went, and it was called Runaway. And then, you know, I took that demo. I, 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 here's a great tribute to you. 1982, I write Runaway. I can't get it on a, a record deal. I can't even get a band because, you know, original bands aren't making any money. So I think to myself, who is the loneliest man in the music business? The DJ. And we had a brand new radio station in New York. It was so new they didn't have a receptionist. I banged on the guys on the glass. He came out. He said, wait, wait till I'm off the air. I said, I've got a song. You should hear it. He says, we're going to put out a homegrown record. So he listened to it after his show. He said, that's a hit song. I said, I know. Nobody <laughs> else thinks so. So they put it on the radio in New York. And that's how I got a record deal back in 1983. So you could do things like that then. I just wish you could. You sort of can. We still get people hanging out the door now uh, downstairs. And, yeah. You know, when, when you meet some people in the street and they say, they, they say, oh, it's you. Do you know what? I've been meaning to contact you. How about... And I think straight away, I'd never say it, but I think, well, you haven't been meaning to, otherwise you would have done. Mm. And that's the opposite of the, the feeling when you see people outside here. We, a guy came, turned up the other week and he says, you know, how about, and he, the fact he bothered to get on a train and come, it still makes a difference, just that the walls are thicker and, yeah. and the, the, the doors are harder to open. Yeah, well, they're really hard to open, uh, you know, to get up here now. But imagine if a kid came in and gave you a tape and just said, please listen to this song. You must love music because you've been doing this a long time. Yeah, no, I love it more now than ever, bizarrely. See? That's that's wonderful, but that that was a strange thought for a young kid at that time. But the be, the best plugging story I heard, and it, you know, it was almost I, it was a sniff of when I just started. It just finished, but there's a very famous DJ in, in the UK called Kenny Everett. Have you heard? Sure, of him? I no. remember him. Okay, so Kenny Everett, who was a you know as big a deal as it could be at the time on the radio, he was taken out for lunch in Regent's Park by the canal. You know the canal yeah, there. Sure. And there was a very, there still is, a very ch famous Chinese restaurant which is on a barge. And he was taken out for lunch by a record exec. And they were having lunch on this barge and the record exec sat, sat in by a window. And then he said, excuse me, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. 
So he, he, he disappears. He dives in the canal and he swims to the barge and he knocks on the window where Kenny's sitting because he's just left him with a copy of the single that he wants to play. Can you play the single? <laughs> <laughs> and, and there was no way he couldn't play the single because right. it was such a great story. I can't remember what the song was no. or the band. That's why right. I couldn't remember. That's okay. when promo meant something. But those were four drink lunches usually back in those oh, days. Oh, a minimum. <laughs> four, four drink aperitifs, I would yeah, say. No, I remember those days with promo guys. They'd be drinking at lunch. Now and again, though. Now and again still, now and again. <laughs> Is that true? Well, I, I don't think so. Not in America. Not in America, yeah. no. The thing you're doing on Friday, I again, when people say to me, I'm struggling with this, struggling with that at the moment, it's often very introspective. And if you start doing things for other people or, you know, focusing on other things, it can get you, help you get unstuck. Yeah. And when you, you do some, you're doing something like you do, you're doing on Friday uh, yeah. for the Invictus guys, it's just... It helps you grow, doesn't it? Oh, most definitely. I, I didn't intend to write songs about soldiers with PTSD and look what the kind of doors that have opened as a result, you know? And and then just when it comes from a pure place like this and giving it away, as I said, I just wanted to do something in the UK that would be my way to say thank you for everything in these last nearly 40 years. And it's turned into this wonderful piece of goodwill. How much do we like you compared to the rest of the world? Do we like you loads? Pretty good loads. <laughs> yeah. Pretty loads like, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, I've, I've, I've had made some friends here. We're quite cool, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> We're quite big Bon Jovi fans. Mm. Do we like you the most in the UK, do you think? Um, well, I'm here, so I'll say yes. No, no, good. just be honest. Uh, we, used to, we used to call it New Germany instead of New Jersey because we're pretty big. Right, <laughs> yeah. in Germany. But we've had a pretty good run, you know. I, I'm still not on the where are they now pile. No, of course you're not. <laughs> Jeez, for heaven's sake. And, you know? and so, so 36 years yeah. and counting, yeah. um, do you think about the future? In as much as this new record is called 2020, it's the here and the now, and you're excited about it. And in, in 2019, I'm still doing the biggest stadiums in the world. So that's that's where my present is. And and I don't I don't really care about thinking numbers and bigger and better in tomorrow. It's just being here now. Okay. And have you done work with that? Have you done work, work yeah. with BB? Tell us. Have you, yeah. can, can you give us some take homes? Come, come on, because you must I've have read been... them all. Yeah. I've seen them. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. You know. I've got more help than. You know, forget about it. But uh, well, give us some, distill a little bit of that for us. Just you know, it's it's not easy uh, navigating life for anyone, and then compound it with being a neurotic singer in a rock band. It takes a little, little bit of not me, me, me. <laughs> I, you know, I I tell my wife I have lead singer's disease, and she <laughs> says I know it's always about you, me, 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 me. And so you know, you got to realize that it's not about you. It's about your. The, the rest of the world around you. So that's the realization. Sure. But what do you do about it? Well, you practice it. You know, there's there's books and there's, you know, like I said, your family and friends that keep your feet on the ground and you talk to professionals about it and you make sure that you're not turned into something you'd hate. Do you have any sort of triggers that you can sort of uh, get back to planet Earth, you know, quickly? Do you have any expedition well, go home to New Jersey. That'll sober you right up. Yeah, no, but say you're not in New Jersey. I don't know, Chris. Come I'm not going to give you all my, my humbled secrets, but there's plenty of, of, of life lessons that I've learned. Life lessons that you've learned. I like yeah. That. Okay. Do you, do, you, do you breathe easy? You seem very chilled, actually. I'm doing okay today. You are, aren't you? Tell that my neurosis has dissipated today. <laughs> It's it's not. I didn't bring it in the suitcase. Does I jet lag help or compound it? It, it helps. It helps because right. I actually stayed in last night after I went to that wonderful show. I went home and went to bed. Uh, tell me about that decision process. Well, because I knew I had to get up at <laughs> seven o'clock in the morning to see you, and it was only two o'clock in the morning in my mind. So why are you looking down? Because you I'm to... drinking my green <laughs> tea. <laughs> Do you want me to move on? Uh -uh. <laughs> Were you at all tempted to go out last night? After, of course yeah. I was. Could you imagine what that after no, party I know. was? I was going to say. So and also, you know, if I play the right record here at the wrong time, I want to go to a bar. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's like you know, if we put on a, any Hendrix track or yeah, you're Sugar in Man a or something room like that with oh. all those people last night, and you know, the uh, the temptation imagine. of wanting to go and hang out. But can you? What's what's funny about that room? And I mean funny in a nice way, not funny, haha, -ha, but it is funny. Is the amount of abstinence in that room must have been yeah, massive. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> because everybody's been there, seen it and done it and maybe doesn't want to do it as much or at sure. all. Sure. I ever don't before. think it was a late night party, but I think that the conversations were pretty great. You know, I think it was more that. Yeah, Just yeah, being yeah. in the room with Pete Townsend to to Geldof to Gibbons to Tyler to uh, to Mick Fleetwood and Ricky Vito. It was cool. I was a fan again. It was great. Have you hung out with Townsend before? 
I've met him. I've never hung out with him. Okay. Um, it's tell, can you tell us about uh, a great hangout story? Give us a great hangout story. The greatest... Uh, uh, well, you find yourself in a corner with someone and you think, oh, Beetle my... Beetle Paul. Come on, tell me. Beetle Paul. That's how I, that's how I call him. That's what I call him. Yeah. I'm too old to, to call him Mr. McCartney, and I'm too in awe to call him Paul. Right. So I always call him Beetle Paul. Right. So it's, so and we went to a, we went to a concert last week together, and we went to see the Eagles. And I said Beetle Paul. And he goes, well, "You always <laughs> call me Beetle Paul." And I was like, "I just can't help it. I said, it's that of your Majesty." So how do you like it? I know. I mean, I had him come to my my home this summer, and I sat down and played him this record. And I had written a song. There's a song on the record called um, "Lower the Flag." It's a pretty heavy song, but I hadn't um, even recorded it yet. And I was brave enough to pick up my guitar in front of a beetle and play him the song. That's oh, pretty awesome. Tell us off, about that moment. Inspiring. Did you think, Did you, were you always going to pick it up? Was it going so well nah, that you thought, nah, I'm going to pick it up? I was so confident in the song that I, I I was cool enough to know that I intended to play it for him. Right, and did he give you some notes afterwards? He did. He, we talked about it, yeah. Um, it was cool. I mean, it's it's him, right? But And to realize that he's, he's you forget, he's a lefty. Yeah. So then he grabs my guitar and he has to flip it upside down and he plays it just as well upside down. Does he? Yeah. Uh. So, you know, we, we yapped about that. So that was like my greatest hang of all time. And I, like you, you have a photographer <laughs> in the corner here. God, I wish I had a photographer in the corner of my, you know, sitting on my couch. Yeah. For God's sake. I don't have a picture. It's but all it's like, in the heart though, isn't yeah. it? It's in the heart. Yeah. Did you see Bruce Springsteen on Broadway? Mm -hmm. What did you think of that show? I loved it. You know, growing up, I, I knew every one of those stories. So I went at the very, very end of the whole run because I knew the stories, but it was emotional to me because they were my Beatles. You know, they grew up 30 miles away and in the, the bars in Asbury Park when I was 16, 17, 18, when I used to be able to sneak in and play because the drinking age was 18, you could start playing at 16. Um, there's pictures of, of Bruce singing with me when I'm, I'm in high school, you know, with Southside Johnny producing my demos in, when I was in high school. Yeah, yeah. You know, so those were, those were my, Beatles and so I knew those stories and so I went with you know to the show and I got emotional especially when you know the part about Clarence and then we went out afterwards and you know had a, a, a meal and a drink and uh and yapped about it but it was cool it was really cool it's funny isn't it because you know you, you you say he's he's your Beatles or mm -hmm. North America's Beatles but there were four of them and I know the E Street Band is you do not mess with them but he's he is some machine he's some engine to have in oh. the middle of all that isn't he no it's it's all him as Granted, an individual he has a great band that he keeps Cracker Jack but it's him you know it's it's those songs and it's I don't know how he does these long you know almost four hour shows and always point. has to. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, well, when he's because I went to see that show, I was lucky enough to get tickets for that show. I mean, I I was taken somewhere. I, that re was really, I re was really transcend the whole audience. It's only eight hundred and sixty people in the in theater, right. wasn't they? Sold right. out. For, it could sell uh, it forever. Sure, he did it for a couple of years. He loved it. He loved it. And I, you know, I, I'd asked him. I said, why don't you just get off of the street here and go to the West End for three months and yeah. go and experience London? Because part of he and Patty's doing it was just to live in the city. It was, you know, to do something different and just live 50 miles away in the city. Almost like have a day job, because it was almost a day job in the end, wasn't uh, it? When that great line, you know, I never work five days in my life. Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> straight to the, um, at the but beginning. The, that, that, that whole thing was just for a different experience, but he chose not to come over here and do it. Sure, he could have done that forever. All right. It was uh, cool. Uh, are you playing live this year? Yeah, we're going to do only uh, the first leg has been announced. It's only 20 shows and it's all indoors uh, in arenas in America. And so I'll take it from there. We'll and, see how it goes. And how do you develop a Bon Jovi show after 36 years? I, it's, I'll tell you what. I, I've been at my studio just singing along to show tapes and playing and getting ready for it. But there's too many songs. And the, and the crazy thing in my own mind is, of course, you know, you got to play the hits. Okay, great. But I want to, <laughs> <laughs> what I really want to do is play all these album tracks. And then I think, oh, what about that fair weather fan? It comes once every five years. So you have to, you got to really think about that. So Elton John has announced he's on his uh, on his right his, the ninety nine year farewell. Yeah, tour. of course. Uh, and he's he's we talked to him just before Christmas, and he's over in Australia now making mm -hmm. this new album and things, and he's playing there. And is he, he making a new album? Yeah. So what he's done is um, the. the uh, 
the, the, his favourite album that he ever made, he made it by getting on a boat, going to America, and by the time he'd got there, it had all been written. Out, and yeah. so he said, I want to replicate that, and it took him 12 weeks. So he's, he's rented a, a house on I can't, on the Gold Coast for 12 weeks. Bernie Taupin has sent him the same amount of lyrics as he was sent 50 years ago, and he wants to just see what that environment will, will throw up this time. Wonderful. So that's, that's what he's doing there. But he said that the, the one thing that he will look forward to uh, when he... he the curtain goes down for the last time is never having to play Crocodile Rock again. Right? <laughs> Which is your Crocodile Rock? Right. Well... Or do you not want to specify I that? don't. <laughs> See, the thing... Because the funny... Th- th- my thought about that is he says that now, but when he's playing Crocodile Rock for the last time, maybe it's the song he'll end up loving the most. Perhaps. You know, I just watched a, a show of his from Vegas. It was on the telly, and I'm watching the whole thing. And as Crocodile Rock came on and the simplicity of that song, it jumped out of the screen. You know, not my favorite Elton song, right? You know, it would Bad Man and, and Brown Dirt Cowboy and those records. But it jumped out of the screen and it made you, like, happy. Do you play vinyl at home? Not much. No, no longer. See, I, I've just got back into vinyl. It's just got something else going on. Yeah, I went to a vinyl shop here the other day, but I get it. I, I don't have even a turntable at the house. You know, if you get the turntable, the right amp, you know, and, and the right wattage, and just putting the stylus, mm. the needle on the record, can be so loud. Mm. It can be such an overture on its own. It goes, Poof. Yeah. And then there's a silence, and then the first few bars of whatever album you put on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. come on. The silence, go, right. Oh, the yeah, silence. Yeah, the little crackle that comes with it. We were just talking about the, the because of the new record. I heard that um, the the mastering plant, the the actual where they cut the the lathe, had burned down in California. So there's a shortage of them. It could take six months to get the vinyl made. Yeah. So this is crazy. So do you, there's not you, enough of them sold yet. But you still have vinyl. Yeah, I do. I still have my childhood. Do you have, do you have collection. anything? Do you have anything special that you, if you put, put it on eBay, go, it would we pay for? We were just it. talking about it last week, and and some like somebody in the house said, "Do you still want them?" I said, "Of course, I want them." I'd have to go up there and look because I haven't even looked at them in quite a while. Are the shelves bending under the weight? No, you know what they are? They're milk crates. You know hey! How, yeah, <laughs> that's, milk that's crates. That's so cool, isn't from, it? You know, from your childhood, they're still in milk crates. Okay, what's the best uh, bit of memorabilia you have at home? I have an acoustic guitar signed to me from Bob Dylan for my 50th birthday, first thing that comes to mind. As a present from Bob himself? No, from Richie, actually. And he went. He sent it to Bob, and and Bob liked the guitar so much he kept it, and said, "Go buy another one." So that you bought me another <laughs> one, and Bob signed that one. True All story. Right. John, it's great to have you. We're going to play the new single, and then we're going to play "Unbroken," which is the Invictus song. Uh, you're awesome. You're a legend. Anything you'd like to say before you it's depart? Great to see you, my buddy. Great to see you. It's great to see you, pal. Thank you for all the support all these years. No. Welcome to Virgin. I'm glad that you're here. Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky.